Hi, everybody. It's producer Susie today because Pamela and Annie are both on their way to my house in Atlanta. So I'm very excited. We're going to be taking this working vacation where you are going to reap the benefits of it very soon because we are going to be doing some hangout-a-thon planning while we're on vacation and having fun. So, thankfully, Pamela pitched me a softball today in the script, and she, because it's a slow news day, it's a slow news day, there's, there was like only one press release, and it's embargoed, which means we can't talk about it until they say it. Because if you talk about embargoed stuff before they tell you it's okay, then you don't get that information in the future. It's really, it's, you know, it's kind of an honor system among uh, science press folks. Yeah, you get in trouble and then you get taken off the list and you don't hear anything ever again. So that's a big deal. So we respect the embargoes. So we don't have anything to talk about science-wise today. So Pamela pitched me this great softball of Let's talk about holiday gifts. And so let me read over here. Thankfully, she gave me the script, although I did put some stuff in it for y'all. Um, but let's get started. Today is a news-free day. We are not quite sure how that happens, but there just weren't any big science results not under embargo that we can bring you. So instead, we're going to help you with your holiday shopping. It's that amazing time of the year when it seems like everything is on sale and we all have some extra time with work and school holidays. So why not take advantage of this and get yourself some space-related tech and games? So as you can tell by the picture, one of the most common questions we get around here is what telescope should I get? <laughs> well, I could tell you Pamela's answer, and this is Fraser's answer too. Binoculars. No, seriously. If you're working to learn the sky, binoculars are your new best friend. Pamela owns several sets. Oh, thank you for the follow. Who is that? You shy? Thank you so much for the follow. At the end of this stream, I will get Jake to come over here and I will make him bark for y'all and you can hear him and I'll give him treats and he'll be very happy. Right now I have headphones on so he doesn't hear this. I don't have him trained yet to respond to it. But I will. But right now, he's being quiet in the other room, and that's a good thing. Okay, let's see. Where was I? Ah, Pamela owns several sets of binoculars from Orion and Celestron that have special anti-reflective coatings on them that help more light enter the binoculars and hopefully your eyes. In general, you should get the largest pair you're comfortable carrying around and hold steady. I know Fraser has this giant pair that look ridiculous. They look like some kind of cartoon binoculars, you know, like the googly eyes that you see on on uh, like old Bugs Bunny cartoons when they find a pretty girl and they kind of go ooga. Yeah, Fraser's got a pair that are that big. Um you may not want a pair that big, but get the biggest pair you can find and hold steady. And Pamela loves her 10 by 75 pair which have a large enough field of view to make star hopping easy, and it provides a 15 times magnification, which is enough to bring Saturn's rings and globular clusters into view. Um, I don't know how much these are going to cost, Gromit. That's a good question. That is more of a Pamela question, but if you go in and you, prob you can probably go ahead and Google uh, 10 by 75 binoculars, and that'll give you a good price range. The brands Pamela likes are Orion and Celestron as well. So go look at those. They're good quality. Um, if you already have binoculars and you're ready to start star hopping with a telescope, go find yourself a Dobsonian telescope that is as big as you can pick up. A scope with a six inch mirror, six inch mirror should be about $300. And it's big enough to catch bright nebula and small enough that a large kid or an average woman can carry it up and down the front stairs without difficulty. And I just realized I have not changed the thing for you. Oh. 
I'm coming up to that slide. See, I can talk, but doing the slides at the same time, boy, that's tricky. Okay. Get yourself a Dobsonian that's as big as you can pick up. That's what I was saying. This kind of telescope isn't suitable for astrophotography, but it will get you started in deep diving into the night sky. So if you want to do astrophotography, well, you're looking at investing thousands of dollars. And we aren't going to recommend any one particular setup. Instead, we encourage you to go over and go to a star party with your local astronomy group. Talk about what they have. You know, take a look at their various setups. Figure out what is going, you know, what works well for them. And then maybe get on the phone with the folks at Oceanside Photo and Telescope. They're our friends. I know Fraser talks about them a lot on his show. They are great. And they are really good about you tell them what budget range or you ask them what you need for something. And they will not make you spend more than you need to to do what you want to do. They're really good. Pamela has gotten on the phone with them a couple of times planning to buy something more expensive. And they've talked her down because they're like, you don't need that. You need this setup. And for those of us that are hobbyists on a budget, that's fantastic. So the Oceanside Photo and Telescope folks are amazing. Go check them out. They also have a podcast. Uh, what's it called? Crap. Paranor, if you remember what their podcast is called, because my brain is breaking on it right now, but if you remember it, pop it in the chat. But anyway, they have a, a podcast. And I just go look up Oceanside Photo and Telescope podcast. I know Fraser has been on their show. Yeah, Space Junk. That's it. That's it. I knew it had a very similar title to a fiction story I was watching, too. Um, they talk about all this kind of stuff over on there. And they do a great job of helping you. You call them. You talk to them. Find out what kind of operating system is on your computer. Your specific size that you want. Your location. You know, what kind of observer you're going to be. Because... If you're watching uh, night sky as opposed to solar stuff, you need very different setups. And this is coming from me. I'm not the science person, but I at least know that already. And yeah, they can help you get tripod mounts. They can help you get tripod mounts for binoculars, all that kind of stuff. Thank you for the link, DPI. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat and stuff too. Okay. Getting to the slide I'm currently showing. While a lot of astronomy is focused on catching light from the sky that you can see with your eyes, you can also do simple radio astronomy from home. Bet you didn't know that. I didn't know that until I read the script. Need a good Christmas project to do with a kid or holiday project? See if you can get your hands on an old direct TV dish. Should not be hard. There's a link that I will put in the blog post that gives all this information. Get the old direct TV dish and a camera tripod. This and a few parts from an electronic shop are enough to get you started observing Jupiter, the Sun, and other objects in radio light. This is a project for folks who are comfortable work with working with electricity and it may make you wish Radio Shack was still in every strip mall, but when you're done you'll have an astronomical instrument you built yourself. So once again I will have this link in the blog post and you can find the instructions. I think this is really cool, and I have a friend I'm going to send this to because he'll think this is really cool uh, because I didn't know you could build your own at home, and that's pretty neat. Thank you so much for the bits, Refs Matt. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You guys are so sweet with me because I can be a little bit of a babbling idiot when I can't edit myself. This is kind of funny. All right. To take advantage of these telescopes, you'll need software to help you find all the cool things in the sky. I saw someone asking about software uh, in there. So here's the ones that Pamela recommends. For a quick observing run planning, the free software Stellarium will do everything you need. It's great uh, because you can pull it all up and it's free. You can't beat that price. It's definitely worth trying, if nothing else, just because it's free. Then there are a lot of more expensive options for folks who want to control their telescope and process data. And 
Our favorite is The Sky by Software Bisque, which has versions for both Mac and Windows. This is a question definitely to ask Pamela when she's back on because she will also know additional software programs. And you guys, yeah, definitely give your recommendations in the chat. I see Kerbal01 recommends Sky Safari, another free one. You, really, honestly, can you go wrong with free ones? You can at least try them, if nothing else. And so that's great. And Stellarium, yes. That one is one I already knew about. That's great to use. Um, I think I have that one on my phone right now already. I'm in Atlanta, so I have a lot of light pollution in the sky. So I don't get to go out and look much. But when I do, I usually pull it up so I can see what is currently up. And I can take a look and see if I can find it. We also have a lot of trees around here. So I'm pretty much stuck looking straight up to see if I can find anything. But it's great because... It will help me locate specific things that are in the sky. All right. Now, let's, let me switch slides. All right. Now to the fun part. And this is from me. Now, sometimes you just want to kick back and have fun on a cloudy night. And for those nights, there are a lot of space-focused games that are just waiting to be played. The main one we're learning at my house right now is Terraforming Mars. We are big board gamers here, and so we have a ridiculous collection. Um, if I ever get my webcam set up on my laptop, I will go and be in my dining room in front of my board game collection at some point. That's where I typically stream from when I have to like be on a, a, a chat or something because it's the best background I have in the house. Because right now, if you looked behind me, you would just see my son's very messy desk. Um, with his computer stuff and all. So this room doesn't have great light. But in my dining room, we have all these board games. So board game recommendation for you. So here's the description. In the 2400s, mankind begins to terraform the planet Mars. Giant corporations, sponsored by the world government on Earth, initiate huge projects to raise the temperature, the oxygen level, and the ocean coverage until the environment is habitable. In Terraforming Mars, you play one of these corporations and you work together in the terraforming process, but you compete for getting victory points that are awarded not only for your contribution to terraforming, but also for advancing human infrastructure throughout the solar system and doing other commendable things. I'll link to a great gaming tutorial video in the blog post from Geek and Sundry, but I also find lots of good information on Board Game Geek that is the primo place to go, honestly. As a board game aficionado in my house, and I'm nowhere near as good as my husband is on this, Board Game Geek is our favorite website to go to to find recommendations, how to play, what people are saying about it. And honestly, we love good board games, and our kids are teenagers and college students, and they'll still play a board game with us. We'll be doing a lot of that during Christmas break when Amanda's home from college and Kevin's out of school. So, yeah. And see, yeah, there you go, Planetary Pan. You're, you're on Board Game Geek already. It's the greatest place to go to find out about board games. So, Ticket to Ride is one of my favorite games too, Carbal. I kick everybody's butt in there because I'm really good at multitasking and combining my routes so that I kind of double up on the points. Yeah. Yeah, we love board games. Um, probably when Pamela and Annie get here, I'll have them look through mine and see if there's any we want to take with us this week. Because, see, they're flying here, but we're driving from here. So we can load up the car as much as we want. But they're having to come kind of light baggage-wise because they're flying. So we may end up taking some of my board games with us for the week. All right. Now the next thing... You may want to put some space on your body. Having some cool, spacey clothes. So the best place to go for that is not here, actually. You want to check out the Star Torialist blog, which is at startorialist.com. Summer and Emily have been curating the best space-themed fashion for years. 
they've been over Fraser's had them on the weekly space hangout you know we we know lots of people mutual friends with them so their blogs link out to the best clothes and accessories for space stuff yay planetary pan they helped you find a dress for your wedding see that's awesome so these guys are great and they help you find stuff for space geeks so that is definitely a great recommendation go over to star Torialist blog and then of course we'd be remiss if we didn't add that you can get cosmoclust related clothing over on our red bubble shop at rebel red bubble slash shop slash cosmo quest and pamela has her art up at 739studios.com and society6.com slash starstrider let's see gromit's asking about a full astronaut suit i don't know if you can get an actual full astronaut suit but you can probably find replicas I would say check Etsy because you can pretty much find someone who will make anything for you over there or it will at least look like it or be a reproduction potentially. Um, that's a good place to start. And if you have a kiddo who maybe has an American Girl doll, they have an astronaut suit for the doll, for the 12 inch dolls. And I'm really having to keep myself from going and buying that outfit because my daughter played with American Girl dolls when she was growing up. And so I've kept them in case maybe I have grandkids one day. May not happen. I don't know. But those are some of the toys I've kept. And I really want to go and buy the astronaut suit for the American Girl doll so that you know, my grandkids would potentially have this astronaut suit for the dolls. Super cool. Yeah. I'm a dork. There's also a Mars Habitat for the American Girl doll, so but it's four hundred dollars. I'm not buying it, but it's adorable. I almost bought Pamela an American Girl doll, but I can't quite afford it. So super cool. Let's see. Oh, Veronica's saying she saw someone at a Doctor Who con who made an astronaut suit cosplay. I bet they made the astronaut suits from the episode where the folks were walking around and their bodies were dead in the suits and you just saw skulls I bet that was it that was that was a good creepy episode so very cool but yeah definitely just google you will find I'm sure someone has a spacesuit at least replica somewhere um I was on Etsy yesterday because I was looking for a cape for my D&D character cosplay and yes see total dork and uh, they also had people that were making custom, you know, Star Trek outfits and all that stuff. I mean, different, the newest ones. They were making the, um, what is the new Star Trek show? The Discovery. They were making the Discovery outfits custom fit for you, which was really cool. Yes, we love River Song. I'm sorry, spoilers. You're right. That was... I should have given y'all a spoiler alert for that, Doctor Who. I apologize. <sighs> I'm talking before I'm thinking. Sorry about that. Okay, so like I said, check us out over at Redbubble and you can find our CosmoQuest stuff. We have CosmoQuest logos. We have the Daily Space logo, I think, on some stuff. We have cute art. Um, Austin was uh, our artist graphic artist for quite a while and we still occasionally hire him when we have a little funds and he made some great shirts and actually you can get the prints on all kinds of things and then Pamela has her art over at Society6 or at her Etsy store which is 739 studios so you can buy a planet or have some of these planet pictures put onto things um, I have one of Pamela's planet necklaces, and it's pretty awesome. Mine is a dark blue planet, like Earth, with a white swirl. And to me, it kind of looks like a hurricane is seen from a satellite view. And it's kind of funny. I don't know if anybody would get it. But there's a meme that's going around that says, you know, someone is saying to a woman, you can't handle the storm. And she looks back at, at you know, like, the face of death and says I am the storm 
Well, that's what I think of when I see my, my necklace. So it's really cool that Pamela gave that one to me. So that's my I am the storm necklace. Um, so you can go find stuff. There's Pamela's, Pamela's planet. She's got big ones you can hang on the wall. Small ones you can hang as Christmas ornaments. And ones you can wear as pendants. Yeah, Kerbal, you've got one of her, her planets too. Yeah, they're really neat. And um, I've been there with her when she was painting some of them. So I actually know this, the method. I haven't gotten to do it yet. I've got all the supplies here. Hopefully I'll get to do it with my daughter over Christmas. Um, so what happens when your kids go to college? You don't have time to do all the cool things you want to do with them. Uh, but I'm very proud of them. And thank you so much for all of your donations, all of your support over at Patreon, all that stuff. You know, everything you do goes to support what we do. And it goes to pay me, it pays Amy, it pays Dr. Pamela, but not nearly enough because she often does not take pay, so Amy and I get paid. That's what kind of person you're dealing with with Dr. Pamela. She's awesome, and she's amazing. And so... If you need something else on your holiday list this year, support CosmoQuest if you're not already doing it. We try to make really, really efficient use of your money and bring you all of this science and all of this cool stuff. So let me switch over to the chat. Let's see, it should pop back up. Um, I'm done with the... Uh, with the products. So does anybody have any questions for me as the producer? I'm not great with all, all of the spacey stuff. I know a lot just from proximity, but if you have any questions for me as producer or just general questions about what we're up to this next week, um, comments and things about the Hangout-a-thon, just let me know. I would love to see anything. And you know, if you have love for us and our adorable furry critters, just let me know. Kerbal says it's refreshing to see a telescope recommendation that doesn't recommend the Power Seeker 127 EQ. I'm guessing that one is the one you find everywhere else. I can tell you that. that oh, and there is Jake. You can hear the dog. Probably somebody walked by outside doing something somewhere. Jake is a very good alert dog. It's a lot of fun trying to record a podcast sometimes when he's in here and the and the delivery guy comes to the door. Oh boy. Does anybody want me to get him to come over here and bark for you? To speak for you? I was about to say let me know. Especially if you give bits and stuff, I'll get him to come over here and talk. Hey, Jake, you want to come over here? You want to hear what you might miss? Come here. Jake, sit. Good boy. He sat. All right, Jake. Speak. Speak. You can speak louder. Speak. Speak. Come on. Speak. Louder. Speak. Louder. Speak loud. There you go. He tries to get so polite sometimes when I ask him to speak. Jake is a mutt, but we, we, I got him from our local um, Australian Shepherd Rescue, so they thought he was at least part Australian Shepherd, but he really looks a lot more like a Border Collie. And so, yes, alerting the flock. See, I think he's a Border Collie because he does hurt us a little, but mostly he's just very aware of everything going on. And he's also a Velcro dog, so he's Mommy's dog. He is right next to, uh, right next to me all the time and keeping an eye on me. And since I work at home and I'm by myself most of the day, he's very protective of me. You know, he has to protect me from squirrels and the mailman and, you know, all of those dangerous things outside. Thank you for listening. The Daily Space is produced by me and is a product of the Planetary Science Institute 
a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to exploring our solar system and beyond. We are here thanks to the generous contributions of people like you. Want to become a supporter of the show? Check us out at patreon.com slash cosmoquestx. We've also launched a podcast version of this show without all the random chatter with, with, this, with the chat. So if you want to just hear the basics of what we're talking about, go over to dailyspace.org and check it out. You can subscribe. We put it out every day we do a show. All right. Also, all of these live episodes are archived over on YouTube. I generally put them up as fast as I can get them up after we record. After we air the show, I can download it, do a little quick quick editing, basically cutting off the stuff at the beginning. And you can find it over at youtube.com slash C slash CosmoQuest. All right. Once again, if you can help us by going over to Patreon, that's awesome. If not, tell your friends, like, subscribe if you can. Go over to our YouTube channel and subscribe for free. Yes, Veronica, you need to post your TARDIS dress photo in the Discord. And if you want to join us in Discord and be able to talk to all of us, look below this video on Twitch and you'll see all the links to all of our cool stuff. And Paranor might be throw that link up in, in Discord over here. I don't remember if we have a Nightbot command, so not fussing it. Paranor, he's awesome. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's the, the Discord thing. So I want to see Veronica's TARDIS dress. That sounds cool. But yeah, once again, anything you can do to help us, whether it costs money or not, we appreciate it. Um, so tell your friends, bug them. Encourage your friends to subscribe to the YouTube channel because we still need about 70 subscriptions before they'll start letting us make some ad revenue, which would be amazing because ad revenue on YouTube, if you can start getting it, it's easy money and that will help support us. Um, yeah, you never know what doors you might open by telling your friends, harassing everybody you know to follow us. That's what I do. I hit up. I hit up my daughter and she hit up her friends. So she's got like half her sorority subscribed to us. Whether or not they watch us, it doesn't matter. Um, but watching more hours does help. YouTube has a limit on how many subscriptions you have and how many people have been watching. But thankfully, the number of hours watched is cumulative. So you ever have spare time and you want to just put YouTube, our YouTube channel up on your computer and start it going on a playlist and leave it running? That would be amazing too. That would help. And I'll ask you to do that, but Pamela would never do that. She would be like, no, I'm not going to ask you to do that. But if you do, that's awesome. So thank you so much. We will be I, I'm not exactly sure what the plan is for streaming stuff next week. We will probably not be regular, but we will try to get stuff up occasionally. And if you are following us here on Twitch, you'll get a notification when we go live. So we'll probably be doing things at random times. And yes, there is no simulcast today because we have already recorded Astronomy Cast this week. So you can go over to Astronomy Cast. YouTube page and watch what we did. We did a double feature on Tuesday. So one of those is this week's show and one of those is a show for next week. Um, yeah, we're in that holiday season where either Pamela's traveling or Fraser's traveling. And I love it when they tell me the day before, oh, by the way, we're going to do a double feature tomorrow. The fun of being the producer. I really do herd the cats and, and Pamela and Fraser are the cats. Uh, Amy doesn't need herding. She's awesome, by the way. Uh, she takes care of herself. Now, Pamela's awesome too. I'd pick on her. She just gets busy and forgets things. That's the main thing. She is busy all the time. So that's what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm the reminder. I bug people until I get stuff. Well, all right. I'm going to let you all go. Cause like I said, I could talk to you all afternoon. Um, look for us next week. Whenever we show up and, uh, we'll be thinking about y'all. Yeah. I'm the nanny. <laughs> That's what Pamela says. She says, you, you heard us. Um, so I kind of am the nanny. Um, 
But yeah, have a great weekend. And wherever you are, don't forget to go out and look up. Bye.